It's been just over six weeks since the death of George Floyd at the hands of police in Minneapolis rocked the nation, unleashing waves of protest and renewed examination of our country's long struggle with racial violence, including instances long forgotten or often never known by many Americans, like the massacre in Tulsa in 1921. But as ABC's David Wright explores, Tulsa is just one of many events in our country's past that were never included in history books, history that needs to be reckoned with as we search for a way forward. The killing of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer in broad daylight, as shocking as it was to witness, was hardly a one-of-a-kind incident. It was a lynching in broad daylight, knowing he was being filmed, looking into the camera, looking into an audience with two officers supporting him. Before George Floyd, there was Eric Garner in Staten Island. <laughs> Before that, presumably countless other incidents not caught on camera. All the way back to the beating of Rodney King in L.A. Rodney King was first. Rodney King is the first case that we have where it's on video, right? Blackby would say, yeah, that happened every day. And when an all-white jury in Simi Valley, California, cleared those LAPD officers of police brutality... California's governor has declared a state of emergency for Los Angeles to... South Central L.A. erupted. The violent L.A. uprising harkened back to the 1960s, to Watts, and later to the anger that followed the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Professor Arthur Garrison has closely studied the history of racial violence in America. He's the author of a new book, Chained to the System, The History and Politics of Black Incarceration in America. The idea is that race riots is an eruption of black anger burning everything they could find, right? That is the narrative. We don't know that most riots in American history are white race riots against blacks, not the other way around. There have been incidents that, that don't seem to be played up in the history books that have come to attention, come to the forefront in recent weeks as a result of the focus on this issue. Details like the massacre in Tulsa of the prosperous Greenwood neighborhood, the Negro Wall Street, as Booker T. Washington called it, burnt to the ground by a white mob. We talk about civil rights starting with Brown v. Board of Education, and we think that's when all history began, right? And so Greenwood is, is 21, right? Rosewood is, 20, is, is, is 1923. But Tulsa was just one of many pages in the dark history of the Jim Crow era. Rosewood, in 1923, this woman says that she was raped by a black man, and the white community in Rosewood rose up and wiped out the entire black neighborhood and chased the survivors out of Florida, never to be, never to be seen again. And then, of course, Red Summer in 1919, that was 60 cities that just over a period of the summer attacked blacks for various reasons, some of them economic, some of them political, some of them racial. As Garrison puts it, slavery and the Jim Crow period that followed slavery, that was systematic racism. The crime now widely acknowledged, but the details often glossed over. It's easy to beat up on slavery. People don't remember or don't want to remember Jim Crow, and if they do, they say, well, that's over in 68. Amazing. One of the most powerful moments of Barack Obama's presidency was the day he gave the eulogy for a South Carolina preacher gunned down by a white racist who had attended a Bible study at Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston. Grace is not merited. It's not something we deserve. Rather, grace is the free and benevolent favor of God. The mass murder of nine people in 2015 wasn't the first time this particular church, one of the oldest African-American churches in the South, has been the focus of racial violence. The original church burnt down by a group of angry whites decades before the Civil War. The congregation outlawed after a slave rebellion. 
Black Lives Matter marches today are not new. The issues, tragically, still largely the same. Do you see this as a moment of change, or is this going to be just one of a long series of cases that get lots of attention in the moment, and then things just go back to normal? We have been, I've been thinking a lot about that, and yes, I think this is going to be a change, because no one living in the United States has seen a full-scale lynching. You watch it on TV, you watch documentaries, okay. There right there was a full-scale, real-life lynching. In this case, there is no ambiguity about right and wrong, and it's just not possible to look the other way and ignore it. Can no longer be ignored. Our thanks to David Wright for that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.